Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today is a good day to build a Panzer 38T, and as you can probably tell, the kind of Panzer 38T I've chosen to build is the 48th scale plastic kit from Tamiya. It has metal too! Yes, it has metal weights, but don't be a pedant, it's a plastic kit. As you can see, the front of the box looks like your typical Tamiya box, with some nice art of the tank in question, and various bits of information you might like to know, like the scale, and the fact that there's a commander torso figure. The back of the box is plain cardboard, which is not especially interesting. So let's have a look at what's inside the box. Sprues. Glorious sprues. There are four sprues moulded in grey plastic. And if you've seen any of my videos on these Tamiya 48th scale kits, or if you've built them yourself, you're probably not going to be surprised when I say that these sprues are really nice looking. They're quite neatly moulded and free of defects and errors, or at least I couldn't find any. I'm pretty confident that such things would be a rarity anyway. As always, I can't speak to the accuracy of the details, being that I'm not a tank surgeon, but Tamiya's stuff is generally pretty high quality and accurate. I really like the rivet detail on this model, that's part of what, in my opinion, makes the Panzer 38T look interesting. Something else I like, though it might not be too apparent in this video, is the vent on the rear of the engine deck. It's got a relatively fine grill over it, and it looks nice. Often that would be done with photo etch, but I'm glad it's plastic and moulded into the part. The tracks on this kit are, as you can see, link and length. They look good and are nicely detailed. And while some people don't like link and length, these ones are not too hard to deal with, and in my opinion, look a lot better than the dreaded rubber band tracks. That's a lot of waffling to say I think the plastic in this kit is really good, but hey, it gives us a chance to look at the pictures, doesn't it? Here's that weight I mentioned earlier. I kind of prefer these weights to the metal hull you often get in these kits, though both are good. It's thrilling to look at this, I know, but we have to move on. Here's the decal sheet. Not a lot of marking choices here, but unless you want to do something fancy, this is really all you need. I'm assuming there are suitable aftermarket options out there if you need or want them though. We also get this sheet of information about the Panzer 38T, and on the reverse side, there's a basic painting and marking guide. Obviously you don't have to follow it, but it could be helpful as a starting point. The instructions are more or less what I would expect from a Tamiya kit, and they're the foldy outy kind. Oh great, he's going to complain about the fold out instructions again. No I'm not. Well, I was. I mean, it could be worse, but I really do prefer booklets. Either way, the instructions work well and are easy enough to understand and follow. There was one or two moments where I would have liked a different angle of the diagram to see how things go together a bit better, but that's not really a huge problem, nor is it specific to Tamiya kits. Okay, so that's good. Let's glue some plastic together. I start, as the instructions say to, with the bottom of the hull, which has some nice detail to it. On the inside there's these hexagonal keyings, onto which I glue these doodads. There's a little bit of play here, but it doesn't really matter. These are just mounts to hold onto the weights, and the weights are not integral to the model, so if you don't want to use the weights just don't put them in. Easy. Next I glue the whole sides on and because I'm a bit of a dunderhead, I forgot to press record. But you can see that they have been glued on, and I'm in the process of attaching the rear plate, which is easy to do, as were the side parts. Not quite as easy as having a hull tub might be, but easy enough. The lower front plate comes next and this is very easy to get into the right place. Now seems like as good a time as any to install the weights. That is of course if you want them. I glued my weights into place using super glue, because plastic cement won't bond metal parts no matter how politely you ask it. Gluing these in isn't strictly necessary, but I want them to stay in place without the possibility of them rattling and clanking against each other. If you don't want to super glue them, that's okay. The way they're supposed to be held in is with these plastic retaining pins. I've obviously used them in addition to the super glue, just because. Next I glue this ring thing onto the front here. I guess this is part of the final drive. Either way, it goes into place nice and easily with a little pin as a guide. Then return rollers, for rolling the return. There are four of these that go onto the little mountings along the top side of the hull, and they're easy to place, though you may need to nudge them a bit so they're straight. I follow that with the drive sprocket. In the middle of this, I add a poly cap, 
This gets sandwiched in the middle of the two drive sprocket parts, which have keying so the teeth line up nicely. Properly aligned sprocket teeth make installing the tracks much easier. I don't know about you, but I definitely want easily installed tracks. Idler wheels come next, and these are simple to put together. There's keying so they line up properly, though I did notice that it isn't perfect, and you can still get these misaligned. I tested them by rolling them along the work surface, and you can tell they're a little bit wobbly because they wobble. For me, that small amount of wobble is fine, but you might choose to be a bit more picky. I don't think it's going to be visible once the tracks are all together. And because we're on a roll with the wheels, let's attach some of those to the hull. Starting with the forward road wheel, you can see how it almost interferes with the drive sprocket. Often on German tanks, the overlap makes it a bit hard to get the sprocket on with the first road wheel, and that's one of the things the polycap in the middle can help with. But in this case, there's enough room between the parts that it doesn't really matter. There's a bit more of an overlap at the rear, with the idler wheel, but it's not too difficult to get those on as well. So that's really easy. Now, some hooks. This pair goes in the front here. They're specific parts, so do be careful not to mix them up. It's a little hard to see here, but they have a sort of sideways curl to them. The pointy bit tilts slightly outward. Now that the wheels are in place, and the glue has had a chance to bond, it's time for tracks. The instructions say to attach the links in numbered order, which I didn't notice, and I ended up attaching them in the opposite order. It did work though, so I'm not sure it matters a whole lot. What does matter is getting the links in the right place to begin with. I used the long upper run of tracks to get a good guess at where the rear links around the idler wheel should sit, and then I added the parts in order, reverse order, around to the front of the tank. One reason for the polycap in the drive sprocket is so that you can move it when adding the tracks. Because the links have a pretty specific placement, if you glue the drive sprocket into place and the teeth don't line up with the tracks, you'll have a bad time. When they can move, you can adjust them to suit the tracks. This is probably pretty common sense and I probably don't need to explain it, but I've already done so, so deal with it, I guess. Some people don't like these link and length tracks, but I think they work pretty well, and if you take your time with them and put them on carefully, it's not too hard, and you can get a good result. Now it's time to add stuff to the upper hull part, which has that nice grill that I mentioned earlier. I start by gluing the hull side parts into place. This one on the right pretty much just drops right on. And onto that we need to add this vision slot thing. The instructions said to add this before the side plate is put onto the hull, but I'm a rebel. Or I didn't read it properly. Whichever. It did take a bit of fiddling, but it does go on. The left hull side part goes on just as easily as the other one, but this time there aren't any vision things to add. There is other stuff, but that comes later. The upper front plate is what we deal with next. The hull machine gun is installed into this little hole here. If you want this part to be movable, you wouldn't add the glue like I have. Instead, you would slide this mounting ring over the gun. I mean, you still do this if you're gluing the gun into place. I saw no need to have this gun movable, so obviously I've glued it all into place nice and solid. Also, this is your opportunity to position the MG how you like it. If it's glued, you won't get another chance. Why not then glue that assembly onto the front of the hull? I can't think of any reasons. It more or less just drops right into place, though you might want to apply some pressure just to make sure the part is pressed all the way up against the hull. Next come these engine deck hatches, I guess might be something you could call these. Engine lids? Whatever you like. There's one of these for either side, and they're easy enough to install. There should be a little overhang on the outer edge. Then I add a shovel. Tank crews really love digging, so a shovel is an important piece of kit, and it's pretty easy to get into place, so why not? We could have joined the upper hull to the lower hull at any time while adding these details, but the instructions haven't said to. Until now. The upper hull part slides backwards under the whatever that thing protruding from the rear hull is. It's pretty easy to get this into place, and the fit, unsurprisingly, is really nice. Time for some hull rear details. Like this, I think it's a towing hook. It looks a little bit high to me, but what would I know? Well, I do know that it goes on nice and easily thanks to the keying. Next, some more hooks. These are much like the ones on the front. In fact, they're exactly the same, and they have the same outward curve to them. I then assemble this box. I think it's a smoke candle holder, but I'm not really sure. 
Whatever it is, there are two brackety things that need to be attached, and these are both different so do make sure that you're putting them on the correct side. That assembly can then be installed here. There's a couple of mounting slots for it so it's quite easy to get this right. Next, a pair of brackety things, which is absolutely the technical term. These can be glued into place at the front here. It was a little bit fiddly and I found I had to do a bit of nudging to make them line up with the mud guards, but it wasn't too hard. Then some spare track link can go into place here. There isn't really anything to guide this, so I just add glue and kajigger it into a place that makes sense to me. On the left side of the hull, there's a little hammer shaped thing. And onto that, I glue this hammer. Makes sense really. You've got to have a hammer for when it's hammer time. The convoy light comes next, and there's a convenient little nub onto which this mounts. You might need to nudge this to get it facing the right way nice and level, but it's nothing too difficult. Behind that we have this whatever it is. It's pretty normal for me to not know the name of the tank parts, but I can usually guess at their function. I have no idea what this is. It's probably not important. On the front left corner of the fighting compartment, this antenna mount can be attached. This looks a bit odd, but that's how it should go on, so that's how I put it on. If you want it to be really fancy, you could drill a hole and mount a thin bit of wire here for the antenna. I've obviously not done that because I don't want to be fancy, I guess. Moving back a little further, I add this thing. It mostly seems to be a bit of hull with a handle on it. Whatever its purpose, it goes here. I did find it a bit fiddly, and I'm not sure it's perfectly in place, but it is in place. The tank apparently still didn't have enough spare track, so here's a section of spare track links that goes on the lower front plate here like so. I wasn't sure if there was a correct way up that this should go, but it looks fine to me. Now it's time to build this little toolbox thing. This is pretty simple. You glue the walls on, while well, being careful not to get the glue on your fingers, and then the lid goes on. The lid doesn't cover the entire top part of this and I was a bit confused by this for a moment, but it turns out the jack is meant to go on top of this as we'll see in a bit. So the way I've got this is in fact correct. I glued the muffler together, but again, I forgot to hit record. So here's what it looks like. It's a pretty simple two piece assembly. While I let the glue on that bond, I put the jack together. This is also a simple two part assembly. You may need to do a bit of nudging to get the end nice and straight, but it's easy enough to do. Gluing the muffler onto the rear plate seemed like a good next step. And it was. The slot in the rear plate works very well to get this nice and neatly into place. There still wasn't enough spare track, so a couple more links can go into place here on the right rear. Easy enough. Then the toolbox goes here, into the two mounting holes for it. It does look a bit weird with that open section on top, but that'll be taken care of later. Just in front of that box, we place this jacking block, or at least that's what I think it is. I guess it could be something else. What it definitely is, is easy to place. Then, in front of that, an axe is placed next to the moulded on wire cutter. You'll need it if you want to ask a question. Next, I fill that gap in the top of the toolbox with that jack I put together all those minutes ago. It was a little bit fiddly to get this into place, but eventually it did go into place, and it looks pretty decent if you ask me. Would you look at the time? What time is it, Herbert? It's turret time. Hooray! The way you are meant to start this is by gluing these two parts together. Then, you slot this paddle looking thing in through the hole, presumably with no glue. I believe there should be a polycap in there somewhere, but at this point I'd lost the polycap somehow, and I didn't really feel a need for a movable gun anyway. So I decided to omit all but the part of the gun mantlet that protrudes from the front of the turret. I glue it into place and set it at the elevation I want. Simple. The turret machine gun goes into place next to that, and there's a bit of keying so that you get it positioned right. There is a little bit of play so you can aim this where you like. Well, almost where you like. I don't think this was a coaxial machine gun, so it doesn't need to be facing the same way as the main gun. Then I glue the two halves of the turret body together. The keying makes this quite easy, though I can imagine it would be fairly easy to get this together a bit wonky because the only contact points are along the bottom. I wouldn't worry too much about that though. You can deal with it by adding the rear wall, which when you've got it in place, will ensure that the side parts are aligned properly. 
the roof will also help you get everything aligned nice and straight. And if you put these parts together in fairly quick succession, you'll have time to nudge everything that might need to be nudged before the glue sets. This is quite easy to put together, and the parts fit really nicely, which is not at all surprising with Tamiya. The next step is to attach the turret front. This pretty much drops right into place, but you might need to apply a bit of pressure. Obviously be careful of the machine gun when doing this. It's pretty thin, and I can imagine it would be very easy to break. Next I glue the two halves of the commander's cupola together. This goes together easily thanks to our friend Keying, and the joins will be hidden by the vision ports we'll be adding in a bit. The top part goes on and this is also easy, unsurprisingly. This is shaped such that you'll have a really hard time doing this wrong. You'll have to put some effort in. Then comes those vision ports I just mentioned. You've probably already forgotten about them, haven't you? Yes! These are nice and easy to install, and there are three of them. The cupola is then ready to be glued into place on top of the turret. I found this needed a fair bit of pressure to get into place without too much of a gap. Easy enough though, you shouldn't break anything pushing down on it. Not unless you really try. This, I guess it's a periscope, or something? Whatever it is, it goes here, just in front of the cupola. It kind of looks like we're missing something. That's right, this little curved piece of armour that goes along the bottom part of the turret front. Obviously that's what was missing. I'm not totally sure if this actually fits properly, and there's a bit of a gap at either end. I'm no Panzer 38T ologist, so I don't know if this is how it should be or not. If it is incorrect it wouldn't be too hard to fill in with putty anyway, so I'm not especially worried about it. Another fairly minor thing that was missing is the main gun, which goes into this convenient mounting hole here. The end of the barrel comes with a hole moulded into it, which is very nice. It's a small barrel so this is way better than me having to drill a hole in it. Much neater. There's also a hatch, just in case the commander wants a tiny bit of protection for his head. Obviously this can be modelled open, and there's a little holder in there for the commander figure. Clearly I've opted not to use the commander figure, and I've got my hatch closed. So for all you know there could be a commander figure inside. There's not! No, there's not. This is just the way I prefer my tanks. You can build yours however you like. You might be expecting me to say the tank is complete now, but that would be a lie. It's not complete. For some reason the instructions have saved adding some detail -y bits to the hull for last. Odd choice, but we'll go with it. I glue this little pole with a ring on top. Whatever it is, it goes here. Then, on the left side, we add this cable and pick part. It might not be a bad idea to leave this off until painting time, but I've chosen to glue it into place. I'm sure I can deal with that, and I would really prefer slightly difficult painting to losing the part while it waits a thousand years to even see paint. The final part is this bar, which looks like it would be quite good for jimmying and prying at things. The guide pins and corresponding mounting holes make this nice and easy to position. The turret can then be connected to the hull using the simple locking tab mechanism. Feels like it's been a while since we've seen one of these. I know some of you will be excited. And hey presto, there we have it. The Panzer 38T Ausführung EF in 148th scale from Tamiya is completed. And a very nice little tank it is. I mean, it is a Tamiya kit. I doubt anyone was expecting it to be bad. So far I haven't been disappointed by any of these Tamiya 48th scale kits, and I'm pretty sure I won't be. They might not be what you would call super detailed, and I'm sure they cause some rivet counters misery, but that's really not my concern. They suit my purposes perfectly. The detail is quite good and from what I can tell, reasonably accurate. Certainly enough for the average modeler who just wants a nice looking Panzer 38T, and that's what this is. The price is fairly reasonable too. While they're certainly not the cheapest models around, they won't break the bank either. And I'm sure if you're into adding extra detail and stuff to your models, this would be a very nice starting point for a project. I don't plan on painting this anytime soon, and I'm not sure how I'll paint it. Plain old Panzer Grey is cool, but there are other interesting things that could be done too. Like a nice bright pink. The choices are limitless. Anyway, I think this is a really nice model, and it's going to paint up really well whenever it gets done. The rivets are obvious enough that you could do some interesting weathering and stuff with them, but they're not oversized and exaggerated like you see on some kits. Not only does the finished result look great, but as you can probably tell from the video, it goes together really well. 
and that is pretty much the standard for these Tamiya kits. There might be the occasional fiddly bit, but nothing to cause any real problems. Everything fit together well with pretty much no need to modify or change anything other than the removal of mould lines, of which there really weren't many at all, and those that were there were easy to clean up. That's why this kit was such a pleasure to put together. There's no hassle or stress or anything, so you can just enjoy the glorious gluing together of bits of plastic, which pleases the glue god. Okay, I might be waffling a bit. My diagnosis? Very nice kit. Several thumbs up. Would recommend. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our friendly Discord community and show us some pictures? We would love to see what you've done. If you want to watch me build kits like this live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel which is where I stream. The link is in the description below. If you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, consider becoming a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch next time I'm live. You can find links to Twitch and Discord, and all of my other things like social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.